dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, Proudly We Hail, starring Jane Wyman in Santana, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is your host, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to your theater of stars, meeting place each week for your favorite star and story. Jane Wyman is one of the fine dramatic actresses in motion pictures, and we've chosen for Miss Wyman the highly dramatic, exciting story, Santana. It's the story which tells of the dreaded Santana storm, which threatened every small boat on the coast, and of the storm in a woman's heart, which threatened her happiness. The curtain for Act One in a moment, but first, Wendell Niles. Tip-top training, unexcelled educational facilities, advancement opportunities, and participation in a worthwhile work. These are part of every Army or Air Force career. And what is the worthwhile work we refer to when describing an Army or Air Force career? Preserving the peace. Yes, your men in uniform are a force for keeping peace forever in foreign countries and on the home front. Support your soldiers and flyers. Now back at the microphone, our producer. And now, Act One of Santana, starring Jane Wyman as Gloria Walker. <laughs> The fishing fleet, anchored there in the bay, swayed nervously like a covey of giant birds about to take flight as the heavy seas crashed over the breakwater. For it was Santana weather, the dreaded time of desert winds, which swept hot from inland to the sea, reaching gale velocities, with dire consequence to every small boat in its path. But to Gloria Walker, fighting her way along the waterfront, the wind posed a more distinct personal threat, a threat to her chapeau. Yes, indeed. Hold on to your hats, kiddies. Santana weather blowing up. Wind of the devil himself. But I find it exciting. I'll never forget that afternoon I was going over to see Reverend Derricott at the mission. But as I walked along the waterfront, something caught my attention. I stopped, only to be interrupted by a man's voice. Hey there. Hey there. What's going on here? Well, what does it look like? There was a loose line on this boat. Oh. I fastened it. Well, thank you. <laughs> Don't mention it. You seem very interested in these boats. They're mine. Oh? I'm Chris Johnson. Oh, yes. Now I know. You have that house high on the hill, don't you? That's right. I've often looked at that house. It's very beautiful. It's the most beautiful house in town. Thank you. Well, I, I better be running. I'm late. Uh, can't I drop you somewhere? I have a car here. Oh, no, thanks. No, I'll walk. I like the wind. I uh, didn't get your name. Is that necessary? You tied up my boat. Whom do I thank? Thank you, lucky stars. But please. Goodbye. So that was Chris Johnson. He really wanted my name, too. Imagine that. It was a short walk over to the mission. My good friend, the Reverend Paul Derricott, opened the door. Well, Gloria, come in, come in, come in. That the wind blowing up? Storm, perhaps. <laughs> Just like my temper. <laughs> Well, Gloria, my dear, I think you've done very well. But where have you been? I've not seen you in church. Oh, I've been terribly busy. I know. But that doesn't excuse you. But aren't you glad I at least came to report? Well, it's about time, one might say. I have more than a passing interest in you, my child, having once fed and clothed you. Well, that seems so long ago. Oh, doesn't it now? Well, Paul, first of all, I have my new job. Good, good. In the factory. But it pays very well. And what are you doing with all your money? Saving it. Good. I'm buying a mink coat. Fiber by fiber. <laughs> well, that's all right. Oh, but I'll make it. I'll make it. Oh, I know you will, Gloria. You always did. And here, this this is for you, uh, a little on account. Gloria. Well, not take it. Don't argue. You can't argue with me, you know. Well, I don't like to take money from you, Gloria, but I admire you for wanting to repay a debt. Oh, nonsense. By the way, Gloria. Yes? Any young men these days that I should hear about? 
not over a couple of hundred. Only two hundred? Well, I'm slipping, Paul. Oh, I, um, I did meet Chris Johnson over here today. He's the man who owns all the fishing boats. Oh, I've known Chris ever since he was a youngster. You have? Why, sure. He comes over most every week, even now, to let me slap his ears down in a game of chess. Well, um, you know, he's the most charming man. Mm-hmm. I'll be sure to tell him you said that. Now, don't you dare forget. Chris Johnson must have dropped in for a game of chess with Paul, and Paul must have remembered his promise. For a surprise, Chris called me the next day, and the day following. Of course, I let him simmer. I managed to be quite busy, but he planned a party in my honor at the house I'd always been so crazy about. Now, how could I refuse? I found myself dancing in his arms, and very comfortable there. Enjoying yourself? Oh, yes. I had such a time getting you out. I want to be sure you enjoy yourself. You're very considerate. Why wouldn't you tell me your name the other day? Hmm? Didn't think it was important. It's a good thing we both knew Reverend Paul. You think so? Of course. But then don't you? Oh, if you do. Let's go outside a moment. All right. Well, the wind is down. It's still Santana weather, though, isn't it? Oh, yes. And anything can happen, can't it? I'm wondering. Why well, wonder? It's a courageous no. It does take courage, doesn't it? To bring a boat in this weather? It really does. Do you like boats? In a very impersonal way. I like them for what they do and for what they bring. That's all. I can't seem to keep up with you. Most people can't. Shall we go back in? If you like. Gloria. Yes? Gloria, I may be crazy to say this. It, it may sound wild to you, but I've got to tell you. I'm mad about you. Chris. I am, Gloria. And I'm asking you to marry me. I want you to be my wife. Oh, I, I know we've only known each other a short while. When, Chris? My darling, you're saying yes. I said when? Tonight, right now. We'll go to Paul's. <laughs> Where's Gloria? In fixing up. Well, Chris, checkmate. Huh. Checkmate. Uh, Gloria's a good girl. You can make her very happy. I'm going to try. She'll emphasize material things a little too much. You can help her there. I will. Gloria's known what it means to go hungry. You've told me. Shh. Well, you approve of the bride? An angel. Oh, you're very lovely, my dear. Of course, you know there should have been a big church wedding with a huge reception following it. You know that. Well, we can wait, darling, if you wish. I don't want to wait. Well, darling, over the threshold and into your new home. My new home. Oh, I guess I can really believe it now. Do you approve? Do I approve? I think I told you how I worshipped this house from the first time I saw it. I used to dream of it. I used to dream it was a huge castle with a drawbridge that hung down an appropriate eloquence saying, Welcome. Come in. I'm yours. Here you'll find warmth, comfort, rest, quiet. And then I'd enter. And I'd watch as the chains pull the drawbridge high over the moat. And then I was in my own world, aloof and protected from all. Well, my darling, turned out to be your castle after all. Oh, yes. Not that I really ever thought of... Look, we can see the boats in the bay. Oh, yes. You know, I'm adding a new boat to the fleet. Oh? And I'm going to give you the honor of naming her. Oh, thank you. I was thinking about her tonight, and I had a thousand wonderful ideas for her. Oh, she'll be superb. Chris, let, let's just talk of us tonight, shall we? Just us? Why, of course. I'm sorry, darling. You know, I used to think that I wanted this house more than anything in the world. But that isn't true. I want you, Chris. I want to know you're mine. Tell me, Chris. Tell me. I have them both, my castle and Chris. 
These first three weeks were exciting, even though Chris was very busy with a new boat. But it was fun, ruling my castle, planning surprises for Chris. Anna, his housekeeper, was such a help. You rang for me, ma'am? Oh, yes, Anna. I want our dinner to be outstanding tonight. Uh, yes, ma'am. What does Mr. Johnson like more than anything else? Something he hasn't had, so, uh, something that would please him and, and surprise him. Let's get a dilly. A dilly, ma'am? Yes, let's really ring the bell. Oh. Well, ma'am, Mr. Johnson just loves a certain dish, a concoction of his own, uh, quite a dilly. Well? Frankfurters sautéed and then served in a grape jelly sauce. Oh, how horrible. Well, sure, he thinks it's divine. Well, all right, all right, Anna. That, huh. uh, that's what we'll have. Uh, but fix something different for you and me before Mr. Johnson comes home. You ought to see her. The new boat? Is she beautiful? Oh, you really ought to come down. Oh, well, I'm going to. You've been saying that. You won't make it till the launching. Launching? Sure, darling, remember? Yours is the honor of naming her and christening her. All right, but... But, darling, do we have to talk about that boat all the time? Well, what's the matter with that? Well, it's all right, but... Well, you haven't even mentioned the dinner. Oh, it's good, very good. Oh, you think so, huh? Frankfurt is a little stale, but very tasty. They're putting the rigging on. Beautiful job. There you go again. Say, what is this, anyway? Anything wrong? Anything wrong? Darling, I just get a little tired of hearing boat, boat, boat every time you walk into this house. Well, now, wait a minute. Let's get something straight here. We're going to be around boats for a long time. And if we are, Chris, I believe you actually think more of that boat than you do of me. Gloria. But you must. It's all you ever speak of. You seem to have forgotten me and my feelings completely. You, you, you changed. I don't know you. Now, darling, please. You're not the same. Oh, yes, I am. I will accept part of the blame. I I have been pretty well wrapped up in that new book. Oh, wrapped up? You've been embalmed. <laughs> Tell you what, though. Next Tuesday is our first month's anniversary. Let's make a day of it, a big day, together. Oh, Chris. Why do I talk like I do? What do you say? A date? A date. Oh, and I love you very much. <laughs> I could kick myself for even raising my voice at Chris. But then I suppose that's part of married life. Oh, just think, married almost a month. What would Chris surprise me with? Oh, Monday night, Chris came home, almost excited as I was. Well, darling, you all set for tomorrow? Well, that's our day. It certainly is. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Hey, I guess I didn't tell you. We're launching the boat tomorrow. We're what? Oh, oh but... Chris, it's our anniversary. Well, that'll have to wait. It's the only day this month the yard can handle a launching. Oh, Chris, why, why didn't you tell me? I didn't know myself till yesterday, darling. You understand, don't you? Yes. I think I understand everything. Pause briefly from our story, Santana, starring Jane Wyman, to bring you an important message. High school graduates, listen to this. You can select the type of Air Force technical training you wish to take. Yes, you can choose an exciting Air Force career, and at the same time, pick the specialized training you want from a list of more than 40 courses. For instance, some of the courses you can choose for career training are airplane maintenance, aviation specialists, armament, administration, or automotive mechanics. Radio and radar are a couple more fields, and there are many more. Remember, high school graduates, you're assured before you even sign the enlistment papers of attending the specialized school you have selected. So why not investigate this opportunity? Go to your local U.S. Air Force recruiting station first thing tomorrow. Discuss this plan with the men there. They'll be glad to give you specific details of the Air Force aviation career plan. Now, act two of Santana, starring Jane Wyman as Gloria Johnson, newlywed wife of boat owner Chris Johnson. Because of Chris's great and natural interest in the new boat of his fleet, 
And because of Gloria's jealousy of his time spent with the boat, an ever-widening void threatens the happiness of the couple. The morning of the launching arrives, and up at the house on the hill, Gloria received a surprise visitor. A surprise indeed. I hadn't seen our visitor since the night he married us. It was Reverend Paul Derricott. I received an invitation to the launching, Gloria. I thought I might pick you up and take you over. Why, oh, that's very thoughtful of you, Paul. Oh, your home looks so nice. Thank you. How is everything going along? I'm splendid. I, I now have everything I've wanted. Oh, I'm very glad for you. Don't I look happy? Not when you tilt your head like that, Gloria. Oh, Paul, it, it's Chris. I don't know what's wrong. It, it just isn't working out. Mm hmm It will, though. I wish I could be that optimistic. Paul, what is wrong? I don't know. You said you had everything you'd ever wanted. Yes, Paul, but still... That's it, Gloria. But still, the missing, the intangible. Oh, I've told you so many times, Gloria. The only real happiness is spiritual. Oh, that isn't true. Not with me. No? A crutch to prop me up? If you choose to call it that. Never, never. Whatever problems I have are still within my power to work out. My choosing, my decision. It's always been like that. And I've been reasonably successful. I have managed, and I'll manage again. Uh, when will you understand, my tempestuous one? Oh, when will you understand? Well, I suppose we should be going along, Gloria. You won't want to be late for the launching. <laughs> went down to the yard. Chris was there. And, of course, extremely busy with his boat. I had to admit she had attractive lines. Hippie, though. But then, all fishing boats have that hippie appearance. The wind had started up again. Quite a blow it was. It was Santana weather. Clear, cold, not a cloud in the sky. Chris led me up to the platform facing the stern of the vessel. He handed me a bottle of champagne with some red paper streamers tied to it. A small crowd was gathered below. You know what to do, Gloria? I think so. All right, do your stuff. Ready to pull the blocks? Ready any time with the blocks, Chris. All right, Gloria. I hereby christen thee Adventurer the Second. Oh. The champagne bottle didn't break. Is that bad luck? Who knows? Try again. I hereby christen thee Adventurer the Second. Oh. Give me that bottle. <laughs> Chris. Skip it. Silly custom, anyway. Well, there she is in the water. What do you think of her? She's floating. <laughs> you expected her to sink? Well, it's happened. I've seen it in newsreels. <laughs> Must be a gag. Oh, Gloria, we're taking her on a shakedown. You are? In this wind? This is no blow. Besides, we're not going far. Don't have all the instruments in. When did you decide to do this? Yesterday. You're coming along, aren't you? But you didn't tell me. I I'm not dressed for it. <laughs> You don't have to dress for this. Besides, I have work at home. You go ahead. I'll see you later. I went home. It was twilight by the time I reached the bayfront. The wind was higher now, and the crackle of the whitecaps on the breakwater was ominous. I thought of Chris, and I quickly put him out of my mind as I hurried up the long, winding steps and into the house. I stood there in the dark hallway a long moment alone. Chris and the others. They wouldn't go far. They surely wouldn't go far in this weather. Oh! I beg your pardon, Mum. Hello, Anna. Practically blew me in, it did. Well, now, it isn't that bad, is it? Oh, yes, Mum. They're saying at the waterfront, it's a real Santana, and God help them that are out in the boat oh, tonight. Anna, shut up. I'm sure. What did I say? Oh, nothing, nothing. Get me a raincoat quickly, will you? I will that. <laughs> I rushed down to the waterfront. The breakers were crashing in, immense breakers, smoking along with the speed of the wind at the height of its fury. The salt spray felt so good on my face. I could think. I, I hailed one of the men there. Hello there. Yes, ma'am. Have you seen the adventure of the second? Don't recognize the name, ma'am. She's the new fishing hull, just launched today. Oh, yes, yeah, she's on a shakedown. I know that, I know that, but did she get back in? No, ma'am, she ties right below here. There's nothing down there. I hope they had fuel. Oh, yes. How does it look to you? The worst storm in years. It's the worst? No doubt about it. 
Four boats on the rocks already. No telling how many lives lost. <laughs> on the rocks. Did Chris have plenty of fuel? What would keep them out in it? Away from the rocks, away from trouble. Oh, Chris. My Chris. And, and you, Paul Derricott. Paul, you are so right. I need that crutch, Paul. I need it. Oh, dear God. God in heaven, dear God, I ask thy forgiveness. And I beseech thee, help me in my trouble. Help me in my... Are, are you all right, ma'am? Oh, yes, I, I'm all right. Oh, I thought you'd fainted. Oh, no, 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 I didn't faint. That's ridiculous. Gloria, is that you? Oh, Paul. Strange. I was at the mission in my office. I thought I heard your voice. You were calling me. Oh, you must have imagined it, Paul. But I don't know. What are you doing out here anyway? But of course, you would be out with all the excitement, all the boats out. Any news? Oh, who knows? I believe the storm has fallen off. But come, over to the mission. You should get some hot coffee inside you. All right, Paul. I was positive I heard your voice. It's your imagination. Uh, perhaps so. Of course. Perhaps it was because I wanted to hear you call me for so long. I did call you, Paul. I don't know why I didn't want to tell you. You've been right, so right. I need help, Paul. I've already prayed for help. What is it, my child? It's Chris. Chris? There's still no word on the boat. I want to pray in the mission. May I, Paul? Oh, you need never ask that. I knelt quietly. For the first time, I realized how wrong I'd been about Chris and the boat. Only he hadn't been building it when we were first married. When any woman deserves more of her husband. I still had been wrong. Oh, Chris. Paul was waiting for me when I arose. Cup of coffee now? Yes, Paul. Come with me. Chris. Chris. Hello, darling. Oh, Chris, it's you. You're back. Back? Oh, Chris, kiss me. Hold me. That's a pleasure. I was so worried about you. Why? I haven't been any place. Oh, the shakedown cruise. Weren't you caught in the storm? Oh, no. We turned back. Too heavy for us. But the boat wasn't at her mooring. I moved her into the back channel. Then I helped them down at the bayfront as long as they needed me. And then I came over here for a little game of chess with Paul. You, Paul? Yes. You might have told me. Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't interrupt it. What? The return of a soul from left field. Say, what is all this, anyway? Oh, I don't know, darling. But it's wonderful. And I'm very grateful to have you. You're out of the storm now, darling. I'm really out of it. And into my arms. That's where I want to be. Oh, incidentally, darling, while we only had her running for a short time, the adventurer performed like a champion. Chris, I want you to tell me every exciting detail. Every exciting detail. To your heart's content. <laughs> The curtain falls in the final act of Santana. Our star, Jane Wyman, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Ex-servicemen of all branches, here's an announcement for you. If you have overseas service in any of the armed forces since the 2nd of September, 1945, you can enlist in any one of eight famous army units now stationed in the United States. And as long as your service is satisfactory, you will be assured of at least three years in the outfit you have selected. Here is a list of the organizations from which you veterans may choose. 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 9th Infantry Divisions, 2nd and 3rd Armored, 82nd Airborne, and the 2nd Engineer Special Brigade. If your old outfit is in this list and you have served overseas since September 2nd, 1945, here is your chance to re-enlist and stay with your buddies who are still in the service. And there's a possibility you may enlist with stripes on your sleeves. Ask for details right away at your U.S. Army recruiting station. Now back at our microphone, our star, Jane Wyman, and our producer. It's a privilege indeed to bring back to the microphone our star, Jane Wyman, 
whose stature as a fine dramatic actress has exceeded only by her personal charm and loveliness. Jane, we want to thank you for a splendid portrayal. You're very generous, C.P. I enjoyed it. The last time I saw you, Jane, was at the ceremonies during the launching of the Friendship Train here in Hollywood. Oh, yes, and what a wonderful idea. What a tremendous success the Friendship Train has been. Surpassed everyone's expectations, didn't it? It certainly did. You know, C.P., I read a line in the newspaper in reference to the plight of the people of Europe. Quote, starve them today and bear their wrath tomorrow. The Friendship Train and all other food contributions will certainly help to prevent that. But... Maybe we could even go a step farther. What's that? Well, I mean, I think we could do a lot for the children of Europe. Very good. Clothes? Yes, yes, clothes, food, and, and, uh, and toys. Oh, I know people will say there's a lot more important things than toys. But do you know, friends of mine have come back, and they've told me that children of entire communities have absolutely nothing to keep them off the streets. You still remember what a doll can mean, don't you, Jane? Well, I certainly do, C.P. Well, how would this be handled? I don't really know, but perhaps the schools, with their very fine parent-teachers association, perhaps they could serve as a collecting agency, if we each individually would get behind a plan. Jane, I agree with you completely, and I'm sure that by mentioning it here, it will receive impetus elsewhere. But now again... Thanks for your proudly we hail performance. Oh, I've enjoyed appearing on such a worthy, for such a worthy sponsor. Excuse me, C.P. <laughs> but now, before I leave, what's on tap for next week? We have a delightful comedy on tap for next time called The Manly Art. It's the story of Al Stewart, a prize fight manager, who discovers a mathematical genius who is also a genius with a left hook. Al realizes he is a contender for the championship. But when the chips are down, Mathematics Incorporated can't add two plus two. Our star in the role of Al Stewart will be that very popular young song and dance star from the pictures Mother Wore Tights and You Were Meant for Me, Dan Daly. Sounds exciting, C.P. I'll be listening. Goodbye now. Goodbye, Jane Wyman, and thanks again for a memorable performance. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, for a delightful comedy, The Manly Art, starring Dan Daly. Until then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Jane Wyman appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Courtroom, the Betty, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. Script is by Rich Hall, with music under the direction of Eddie Scrivani. Remember next week on Proudly We Hail, Dan Daly. This program was transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.